Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news on Detroit's east side. A violent crash sends a Detroit fire engine into a gas station. Off the top at 11, the fire truck was first hit by an SUV. That caused the chain reaction crash as the fire truck plowed right into the station. Amazingly, no one was seriously hurt. Tim Pamplin is on the scene with a night cam. Quite an incredible sight here on the east side. State Fair in De Quinda. The fire truck goes barreling into the gas station. Let's get straight to the video. Top of your screen, you'll see the fire truck heading right towards us on the top right. The Lincoln, boom, they collide. The Lincoln hits utility pole and the fire truck just demolishes that work van, setting the gas pump ablaze and careening into the gas station. The workers hop out that truck, thinking there's going to be an explosion. And I was on pump four, put the gas pump in, and stuff just started flying. Yeah, James says he's at pump four. You see him, we circled him right there. As the fire trucks come bounding, lights and sirens, boom. He didn't know what to do, where to go. Then suddenly all hell broke loose. You just, chaos, just chaos. You see people running. I look around, like I said, I saw the fire truck run up on the curb. I saw it hit the gas station and people just start running like it was gonna be an explosion. Now three firefighters and three civilians transporting, including the little baby here, mom, dad, and child. Uh, minor injuries, just gonna go get checked out. The family was in that Lincoln. Now, if this looks familiar to you, uh, deja vu, I take you back to summer of 2019. Exactly the same location, same situation, same fire squad. Back to tonight from a gas station across the road. The fire truck taking out the sit go sign, hitting the gas pumps, spinning that work truck. Yes, a TNT work truck, no less. The guys inside there didn't know what hit them. I spoke to one of those workers, said his back was killing him, didn't want to go on camera. Again, six people transported, three firefighters and a family of three. Just incredible. I spoke to the owner of the gas station tonight, a nice gentleman said to me, he's thinking of putting some rather large boulders right at that corner. Might be a wise idea. The big rigs here ready to get the fire truck out of here. A lot of people tonight. Very, very lucky indeed. That is a scene on the east side with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. Oh, all right, Tim. Coronavirus cases continue to surge, topping more than 6,000 here in Michigan over just the past 24 hours. That is the most in a single day since the first week of December. And to combat the recent spike, the city of Detroit now ramping up vaccines at the TCF Center from 5 to 8,000 shots a day. Despite cases climbing, so far the word from the state is no new restrictions are being announced at this point. Our Mar McDonald is live at the TCF Center. And Mar, and next week, all adults in the state become eligible for the vaccine. Kimberly, they sure do. But you know, the city of Detroit, as well as the city of Grand Rapids, they are already vaccinating general population, meaning 16 and up. But I guess the big question is when the rest of the state catches up, is it going to be enough to turn these numbers around? Take a look. Nobody in leadership in Lansing is willing to say what the trigger will be for restrictions to come back. We've loosened our restrictions on March 5th. Um, we continue to watch and get these vaccines in arms, and we, we will continue to see where we got. But it's clear that with cases so high, precautions are critical. The lieutenant governor very open about what Easter is looking like in his house this weekend. We're, we're not going to have a family gathering this year again because I don't want to risk it. For now, it's a waiting game to see whether the vaccines and a push to recommit to mask wearing can prevent hospitalizations reaching a point where the health care system is compromised. You know, a time to expand uh, has become very important at right now. I would spikes. Detroit is already vaccinating 16 and up and ramping up to 8,000 shots a day at the TCF Center, but many here are reticent to get the vaccine. The LG would urge you to reconsider. What I'm saying is not as the lieutenant governor, as a person who's making these policy decisions, although I am that, I'm saying it as a man who has said goodbye to 27 people in my life from COVID-19. If those people would have had a vaccine available to them, they would not be dead. They would not have had to go to the hospital. And I don't want that for anybody else in Detroit or in Michigan. Back here live, you have the opportunity to get vaccinated 16 and up across the state starting on Monday. We're live downtown tonight at the TCF Center. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. So critical. All right, Mara. Opening day just about here. And unfortunately, it's not going to feel anything like baseball weather. That's right. And ben, you warned us about the snow, and some areas are seeing more than just flurries here. <laughs>
Yeah, it's coming down pretty good, uh, guys. And we're an hour away from April Fool's Day. And you may think this is a joke, but this is the real deal. Check out Storm Tracker 4 and look at this patch of snow showers that is east of 75 coming out of the north zone as it starts moving into Macomb County. This is coming down fast enough uh, that we may be seeing some minor accumulations, especially on some of the grassy areas. But as temperatures head south of 32 tonight, uh, we should be watching out for a few slick spots as we start out tomorrow morning. Lapeer reporting heavy snow right now. Pontiac and Mount Clements reporting some flakes, as is Port Huron, and that's likely going to continue to push south. A forecast model showing that overnight this should start to wane, and when we wake up tomorrow, we're still going to see some flakes during the day on Thursday, but they're just going to be a lot lighter than this patch of stuff that's coming through right now, and we're finally done with even the clouds by 7 o'clock. Not enough to save the game tomorrow. I mean, they're going to play through this, no doubt. It's just not going to be conducive to sitting in the stands and watching temperatures in the 30s wind chills in the 20s and we will see plenty of wind gusts going along with it coming up we're going to talk about a much nicer weekend and the return of the 70s is in the seven day forecast guys <laughs> yep okay ben thank you well opening day as you know is an unofficial holiday here in detroit but tomorrow we'll look a lot different inside and outside of the ballpark let's bring in larry spruill who is outside comerica park tonight let's start with the message that the city is sending fans larry well, Devin and Kimberly, the city says the message is simple. If you do not have a ticket to watch the game here inside Comerica Park tomorrow, then you should not be in this area at all. But I did speak with several businesses and they have a different message. Take a listen. You can feel and see the excitement among both customers and employees here at Brasswell Pizza Bar in downtown Detroit just hours before what many call a big day in the Motor City. Opening day is always a holiday in, in Michigan. Bar manager Kevin Weathers says it's the day many wait all winter for, the first home game of the Detroit Tigers season. But this year it will be a lot different than previous years. No large crowds, no crowded bars or restaurants. We have everything six feet apart. Our tables are six feet apart. Um, um, we have a high capacity here. We can utilize our upstairs. We also have a bar next door we're going to utilize. Let me just say this. Opening day is not going to be the same um, that we're accustomed to because of the pandemic. And Denise Fair, the chief public health officer for the city of Detroit, says the city is echoing this simple message loud and clear. If you don't have a ticket, we are encouraging you to stay home and watch the game in the comfort of your own home. Fair says that's because the COVID numbers here in Michigan are going up again. That's why the Detroit Tigers and the city are enforcing special precautions for opening day. The main rule is the stadium will only allow 8,000 people inside this 42,000 seater stadium. But Fair says that's not it. We are going to enforce with the uh, police department. We're gonna write tickets, shut down as needed and remove licenses if necessary. I think that if you have your vaccine and there's a good amount of people who do, and if you keep things safe, um, I don't think they should discourage people from coming downtown because a lot of bars are doing the right thing and keeping people safe. And once again, the health department and the police department will be out here in full force, make, going from bar to restaurant, making sure that they are following the protocols. Also, another change is that there will be no tailgating in the downtown area. Denise Fair says simply, you cannot practice social distancing in a tailgating atmosphere at the same time. We are live at Comerica Park tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. Yeah, you got it right, Larry. Two people are dead after an apparent murder-suicide in Garden City. It happened on Windsor Street near Henry Ruff. Around 12.30 this afternoon, officers found a man and a woman shot dead outside of a home after responding to a report of a shooting. Police tell us they believe the man shot the woman before taking his own life. Millions of Johnson & Johnson vaccines are going to waste because of a mix-up at a factory in Baltimore. Human error ruined about 15 million doses, forcing a delay in production of the one-dose vaccine. The mistake has to do with the mixing of the vaccine's ingredients. It does not affect current doses being delivered and used nationwide because those were produced in the Netherlands. Future shipments from the Baltimore plant are on hold while the quality control issues are being worked out. The global chip shortage is pushing Ford to temporarily stop production at a local plant. The Dearborn truck plant is going to close for two weeks starting April 5th. Ford is also canceling overtime shifts there for four weeks spread between April and June. The plant builds the awfully important uh, F-150. Ford says five other plants will be impacted by this chip shortage.
Still ahead, it was the country's hottest commodity one year ago. Now we need to prepare for toilet paper to cost more. And that's not the only thing getting more expensive. But first, the search for a driver tonight who hit a man on a moped in Oakland County and then took off. That's next.